you're not familiar with Murphy's Law, it's simply an adage that states whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And in this particular case, we had a twofer. One, I had a friend and his wife whom I hadn't seen in 35 years trekking all the way up from Kentucky to visit us on the coast of Maine for a beautiful week in September. Now, naturally, as soon as they got here, Hurricane Lee also decided to make landfall and tried to ruin everything. On top of that, we took every precaution to prepare our boat for this storm. We took all the sails off, the dodger down, we closed all the seacocks. But of course, Mr. Murphy had to rear his ugly head again. Stick around and find out what happened. Hey everybody, welcome back to Boat Fool Sailing. So, um, a little mea culpa. We had uh, Hurricane Lee come through this past weekend and as part of our prep for the storm, we closed all the seacocks and including the raw water intake. Which and, is the right thing to do, by the way. Right, that's proper protocol. So if something lets loose, your seacocks are closed and your boat doesn't flood and sink on you. And uh, so the hurricane came through. It was a bit of a nothing burger. Uh, there were some high winds, but we didn't see any boats that broke loose or went up on the bricks, but a lot of people hauled. We didn't. We stripped the boat down, took all the sails off, took all the windage down, took the dodger down, closed all the seacocks, and then came out the next day, and we were so excited that the boat made it through the storm. We put all the sails back on her, and we decided to fire up the engine, and we forgot to do one very important thing. And we feel pretty stupid Open about it. Open that seacock, raw water yeah. is needed for the engine to run. Right, and since Canadian Ken isn't here, aka Green Card, aka What's Your Frequency, aka Kenneth, we're blaming him, but yep. it's all of our faults. His fault, well, his Josh fault. wasn't here, he was in Vermont, so he really can't take blame, but he's here to help me fix it, hopefully. So what happened is we think we uh, burned out our impeller. So today we're going to do our best to uh, replace that. We're going to open it up, check it out, and we're going to check out the, um, heat, uh, the heat exchanger, make sure there are no rubber pieces in there. So um, we're, we feel pretty stupid, but uh, we're boat fools, and these things happen. It's all our, our second year with boat. We haven't prepared for a hurricane before, so we were overexcited and we didn't think things through. So this is a cautionary tale and uh, well, hopefully a quick fix. Hopefully a quick fix. We're going to take you with us and uh, hopefully we can get this thing back in uh, running order in short order. But uh, we, uh, we had to bring it back from Rockland to Camden with no engine and uh, you'll see that in this video. So uh, it was a little bit exciting good and, times. and good practice, frankly, right? We yes. had to learn you know, a lot. How many attempts did it take you to get it to the... Uh, nailed it on the third one. Yeah, third time to charm. That's it. It was a gusty westerly, and we only had the main up, and we learned a little bit about that, too. Yeah, uh, pointing right into the wind, trying to grab that mooring ball with not a lot of uh, maneuverability with just the mainsail. Yeah, the one complaint about the Morgan 3A2 is it's got a pretty small rudder. It's about the size of a postage stamp, and so it doesn't perform like a sports car or a boat with a bigger... Uh, rudder, so it's a little bit uh, sluggish. But anyway, we made it on on the third try, and uh, we used our headsets, which was very useful. Awesome um, piece of equipment. Yeah. I highly recommend you yeah. purchase those. Uh, Hollyland is the name of those. Uh, you, we've profiled those in another piece, but they're fantastic, uh, especially with that gusty wind. So we're going to open up the engine compartment and take a look at what kind of damage we did. Girls. Bug. Hey. Hey, what are we doing? Okay, so uh, Hurricane Lee is approaching New England and I'm helping my stepfather get his dinghy out and I am taking the beagles with me because there is nothing else to do with them. Uh, so it's gonna be a heck of a couple days around here. They're taking all the docks out at the Camden Yacht Club and in the harbor. So uh, we're gonna haul his dinghy and then we gotta shake our butts down to Rockland tomorrow to get BB on her mooring and uh, strip down for the storm. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, we've just uh, undressed VB for the hurricane. All sails are off, dodger down. Anything that can create windage is off the boat with the exception of the boom, but we think we're gonna be okay. The storm did track to the east and we got really lucky. However, we were so excited that nothing bad happened to the boat that when we put her all back together, that's when the trouble started. Strong west southwesterly. Two 
Julie at the helm. Looking at the entrance to Rockport Harbor. Gonna get jammed in. Sorry for the wind. You guys are matching. Yeah, matching Those matching. are not VB colors. This is Julie from uh, Louisville driving VB. Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky? She's a Kentucky woman. Do you guys listen to that? I've been down in Kentucky. Yeah. I've been down there. Kentucky Woman by Neil Diamond. Alright, back to these guys. <laughs> and Linnea, Josh's wife. Yeah. See that red and white? And we're heading, we're bringing the boat from uh, Rockland back to Camden. And we're going to have some true confessions later of how I messed up our engine. All right, how fast are we going, Julie? Okay, don't hit that government marker head, red head yet. Bear off a little bit. Yeah, come down. Yeah. How fast are we going, Julie? We're going 6.21. 6.21. All right, that's all right. We're towing the dinghy, getting some breeze. And we're steering like a madman, right? Yeah. Right here? Feel this right here. That's. Now I've got to go back towards it. Not too close. Okay. Ask Josh about that. Well, you can get pretty close. Don't hit it. Okay. You hit one government marker. I'm like, why is this happening? She's like, because the wind is blowing you that way. It all comes together. Okay, I got it. There you go. I'm getting it together. I'm getting it together. I'm getting it together. Yeah. You feel it. When is that? She's Excellent. a very forgiving boat. Okay. And up, we have. Antigo's been around uh, since we were kids. It's like a 1977 Sparkling Stevens design. They did not burn up their impeller, which is why they're motoring, and we're not. Uh, we do not have a third headset. We should probably get one. Yeah. 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 We are, in fact, using the headsets. I'm doing a little roll here. Yeah. Uh, Josh on the helm, and our engine is pooched, so we are sailing to the mooring and these headsets are coming in real handy. Since we couldn't use our engine, we had to sail to our mooring. And of course, as Murphy's Law would have it, the wind was gusting from the west from the exact direction we needed to go. And we quickly learned that the Morgan 382 does not like to beat to windward with just her main up. However, we prevailed and we landed safely. Okay, so we're looking at the impeller here and we did burn it out. Um, you can see we've broken some of the fins off and uh, now we need to try to figure out how to get this out of here. We're gonna put a little lube on it and hopefully we didn't lose any blades. So what we have to do is we have to pull this out, count the number of stubs from the blades or the fins and make sure no rubber uh, left into the system which would go back here through to the uh, heat exchanger and if we did lose some pieces then we have to open up the heat exchanger and see if anything is blocking uh, water flow so we did in fact uh, burn up the impeller so um, this is our task to replace this and to check the system make sure no pieces got into the system and 
don't forget, always replace the gasket. Oh yeah, so uh, good point, Josh. So this gasket here, uh, we make these out of a special paper and uh, we need to replace that as well um, because otherwise it'll leak water. So um, stay tuned. All right, so lube it, you said? I would just lube the outside edge and then see if we can get in there to pull that. Doesn't seem like it fused or anything, which is good. Uh, not a whole lot to grab onto is the problem. <clears throat> it's like disintegrating when I pull it. Yep, uh... I think I can get it now. Can you both sides? Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> We're gonna get it. Ah, sweet relief. <laughs> Victory is ours. It, uh, yeah, let me clean this out. Um, I mean, how are we ever gonna know? Looks like one. Looks like four half blades. Here's a blade. Here's another blade. Right. So we're, we're only missing two then. Yeah, here's another one. Three. Here's four. Not bad. So one may have gotten into the system. Looks like. That's not so bad. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know if that would really impact it water probably, flow or it not. Probably won't. Um. That's huge. All right, we got that out. So this is your raw water impeller casing here. And we've got a replacement. So we're gonna lube that one up and it doesn't look like we did any damage in there. But just for references, what a trashed impeller looks like. Yeah, that one's These pushed. are the pieces we're counting. We've got three, we're missing one. Oh, wait, is it a full blade we're missing? No, it's a half. A half a blade, okay. Yeah. So that has gone into the system. Unless it, there are a couple micro pieces down here. Could have shattered, yeah. Um, so it could have just disintegrated. And if they're small enough, they'll pass on through. But now we got to make a new seal and put the new impeller in. And hopefully we'll be back in business. So there's a couple handy tools to have on board when you're doing this kind of operation. You might think, what do I need a paint scraper for on board a boat? Very good for removing gaskets. Oh yeah. So the paper sticks there, so you want to get it nice and smooth. So you get all the paper residue off, which you can see I put all in the sink here. That's the yep. old gasket. And then I like the, the fine steel wool, just kind of polish up that edge, get any residual stuff off. So your new gasket's got a nice smooth seal, so nothing blows by. Perfect. And we'll do the same thing on the housing here. Make sure they're made up nice and clean. Yeah, there's definitely some residual crud on there, and. We're going to show you how to cut a new gasket uh, out of this specific paper, hopefully. It's usually Canadian Ken's job, but we're going to give it a go. Okay, so this is your gasket, and we've cut this out of a specific paper, which we'll show you in a second. But uh, what we realized was uh, Canadian Ken made this. The gasket encroaches upon the open space of the raw water intake, and what will happen is it'll get sucked in and block the impeller. So we have taken, in our MacGruber fashion, a wine glass and put it on there and stenciled uh, where we need to trim off so we can cut that off so it won't interfere with the blades. So uh, total MacGruber, but it works. I lined up uh, the top. Yeah. These two? Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I think that'll work. All right, so that should hold water and not impede with the blades. Yeah. Now we're going to... Uh, we're going to put the impeller in first before we add yep. a gasket. Add, add a little lube to the impeller first so before the water gets there it doesn't burn up again. Super lube. Super lube. Synthetic is. penetrate. Yeah, this is excellent stuff for this. And you can also use, they say you can also use uh, like Vaseline. Oh, and another quick uh, hint. Socket. Impeller? Uh, right here. Impeller. It helps sometimes to get the right size socket because these are really stiff and then you can, once you get it lined up with a key, see the key line? Key line here, you can use that 
with a mallet to, to drive it in after we lube this up. Yeah, because it's a tool to have. Yeah, a good point because it's really a tight fit, so you do need some a little extra oomph. Yeah, I'm gonna do this in the sink. Typically, when you buy an impeller, it does come with a little packet of lube with it, but um, we can't find ours, so we're using this. Someone used it. Yeah, we did use it. That's true. A little proud there, brother. Okay, so this has not gone according to plan. Uh, we got the old impeller out, we put the new impeller in, and uh, we turned the engine to make sure we hadn't done any damage, and we noticed some smoke coming. Um, and before we do that, we use, what's it called? I can't pronounce that. Ah, Caracol Pack. Caracol Pack paper to make- gaskets. Yeah, to make, uh, to make this seal. Sharp knife or scissors, very good to have. Yeah, exacto knife would be ideal. Yeah. Uh, again, we had to McGruber it a little bit, but uh, so upon further inspection, we realized uh, that there was smoke coming out and that didn't seem right and the impeller wasn't spinning and so we, pulled we, it. we pulled the water pump off. This goes to the engine. Which cranks that. Bearing, these bearings inside here is what was smoking. Therefore, it was not lined up to pull enough pressure on the impeller to suck the water through. Also have a worn key in here. Good idea to keep an eye on those because with a worn key, it will spin on the shaft. It won't grab the impeller. So we're gonna take this and go down to our local hardware store slash diesel mechanic. Johansson Boatworks, in case you're listening and yes. are in the area. And they're gonna order us the uh, bearing kit and hopefully put us back together. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. Ask for Jeff, he's a good guy. Yeah, he seemed very helpful. All right, we'll get a picture of what the uh, internals look like. So this is the, in, the inside on the engine of where the, where the water pump connects. And this, is, this key fits into the back of the water pump itself, which spins it, which spins the impeller blade. And uh, yeah, we really screwed the pooch on this. So uh, lessons learned, and we're gonna go hopefully get this thing back together in short order. All right, we're back on the boat. We went and saw the diesel mechanic. He does not think we blew the bearings. Uh, good news. That's the good news. So he put it all back together for us, and we're gonna attach it. It's awful nice of him. And he even shine it up for us. Look at that. Yeah, put it looks it on brand the wheel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we just got to put this bad boy back on, and uh, hopefully put it on correctly. Open the seacock, and uh, strap on a couple helmets and see if this thing works. Fire her over. Turn her over, and hope for the best. Just hand tightening the uh, four bolts, four nuts. Of course, two are hard to reach. Crescent wrench would be nice and handy right about now. Yeah, what do we figure? That's a half inch. Half inch crescent and box wrench. Yeah. At least this is not on the back of the engine. I don't know. <laughs> Could you imagine? And then all we have to do is attach the in water and the out water and open the seacock and let her rip. Yeah. You want the open end? Yeah, I'm gonna need that. All right, so we fired her up and at the moment everything looks good. She's pumping water out the back. We'll go check on that again. Sweet victory yes. is ours. Water pump fixed. Wow, that was a process. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to open your god darn seacocks. Yes. Uh, it can ruin your whole day of sailing. Uh, we started this at, what time was that this morning? Uh, I think it was about 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, it's now 4.15. We did stop and get some sandwiches though, you know. Yeah, you can't have- we're gonna fill the Canadian. It's all his fault. It's Canadian Ken's fault. <laughs> We're gonna have a beer and celebrate and uh, let the engine warm up, but uh, we 
dodged a huge bullet. So, yeah. uh, well, we learned right. something today. And never yes. be afraid to learn something every day. To learn experience and see. It, it's, a, it's a really good point. You know, uh, we buy older boats because that's what we can afford, but it's also part of the process of learning how to be a good uh, good sailor and seaman and, and understanding your boat. So good mechanic. Good mechanic. Yeah. Learn how to take care of your engine, and uh, you, you'll feel good about uh, going out to sea and knowing how to troubleshoot certain things. Always carry a spare impeller and lube, apparently. Gasket. And a gasket. <laughs> gasket lube. Yeah, gasket lube. <laughs> right kind of lube. Okay. Uh, all right. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week.